Alright, crew down Ramones, how's the math.com? This is pre-calculus, basically. Simple pre-calculus. Uh, factory and third degree polynomials. How easy? Well, it's easy when you can see it. So, this was with an autistic student, actually. And we just made a game of it. We played. Uh, first, we got to know the pieces. So, of course, if uh, you're doing this with your students, three period lessons, so they know this is a x to the third. There's an x in there. There's an x squared. There's a different kind of x squared and explain why this is an x-square and this is also an x-square and you can use a base 10 lesson also because you know 100 and this is also 100 it just happens to be 1 by 100 and this is 10 by 10 or this is x by x and this is 1 by x-square of course if that's 1 by x is x to the second by x and this is where again we blow the other systems out of the water because they don't they're they they fall apart here because they can't show x to the third much less x to the fourth if you look at uh the blog I think there's some on the uh, House of Math site. You'll see x to the fourth. And we could go even higher if we wanted to. But anyway, we're just fooling around factoring these. So, factoring, what does that mean? That means, well, I got 3x to the third. There they are. 4x squared. 6x and 8. Huge clue on how to build this, by the way. Just looking at that. And I know students at private schools that have other tutors <laughs> that look at problems like this and cannot figure out how to begin factoring them. So, anyway, I look at this and I go, oh, look at that. Well, there's only one way to make 3x to the third. And that's like this, because that's a prime number, so we've got to stack them like that. Or, we could put them long. But if I put them the long way, how am I going to get that in there? No. So, uh, you see, and then I'd have to stick all these guys there, and then there'd be no way for me to get the units in there. So, I know i got to stack them on top of each other. You're following that. And then 4x squared, hmm, well, I could use that shape, but then where would I put that? I'd put that other one, and then where would I put the other guys? I wouldn't I have no way to, okay, so anyway, I'm going to put it like this. And then that 8 gave me a, uh, or excuse me, that 6x gave me a good clue of how I'm going to put these guys, right? Because I have my 3 there, so, all right, okay. So then 2, 4, 6, 8, it's in there. All right, so now I can factor it very easily, and that's just counting the sides. One side is x squared plus 2. That's this side, x squared plus 2. And of course, for you amateurs out there, that's an x squared and 2. And we're just counting the edge, right? We wouldn't count the inside, just the edge. And here is 1, 2, 3, x plus 4. Simple. Okay, so then here's a bigger one. This, okay, so we did a couple, with, and I didn't put them all, I didn't get pictures of all of them, but the idea, and here they are in, the, uh, in her notebook. And then I said, all right, make a, one of your own. So what does she do? Immediately, she makes a huge one. Why? Because bigger is funner. Right? It's not scarier. When you have it bigger is more fun. Look, you got lots more stuff to count. And what skill do you need? Can little kids do these? Little kids can definitely do these. What skill do you need? The ability to count. Right? So i got to be able to count all the green ones, which are called x to the thirds. One, two, three, four, five of them. And then I'm going to count the next biggest ones, which are the x squareds. One, two, three, four, five of those. And then 15 of these, right? Three, five times. 15x, right? Gotta tell me what kind. And you can't really see it in the book, but there it is written out. And then 15, three by five again. Okay, so there it is. 5x to the third, 5x squared, 15x, and 15. Love all the fives, right? She had fun with that. Now, we could probably factor this by grouping, right? <laughs> but why would you need to when you can just look at it and go, oh, x squared plus three? And 5x plus 5. Right? Um, and there it is. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, x plus 5. Now, um, makes it really easy and fun. But if you wanted to factor it by grouping, I didn't even talk about factoring by grouping. <laughs> we just counted it and we were done with it. But what is that? That is a way to help you do it when you have no picture. If you have no picture, you can factor by grouping. What do you take out? You take out 5 x, or, uh, yeah, you'd have to take out a 5x and uh, 5, and 5x and 5 here, how are you going to do it? So anyway, your x, your, your what do you call, your uh, grouping would be, uh, let's see, if I took that out by factoring by grouping, I'd have to be able to take out, I'd take out 5x, ah, you know what, I could take out an x squared. And if I took out x squared, I'd have 5x and 5 there. And then over here, if I took out uh, a 3, I'd have 5x and 5 there, right? So then I'd have x times 
5x plus 5 and 3 times 5x plus 5 and then I'd have to put them together and do this. Anyway, I don't have the symbols down here, but that's basically a lame description of factoring by grouping. Um, but what you basically do is factor out this one and then factor out that one. And this one just happens to work, but why do you need to if you just know that one side's x plus x squared plus 3 and the other side's 5x plus 5? And you'll see I did uh, some work with another student where we did that. So now we did one where we had some of the square ones just for fun. So there she is writing it all out. And now she's about to write the factors in. But you can see this, even though it's upside down and backwards. Uh, 3x squared, 5x, well, excuse me, 3x to the third, 5x squared, 5x, and 2. Again, this part over here, man, these give you the clues right there. They give you huge clues, especially that 2 right there and how you're going to build the thing. But uh, when you're just looking at these and you've never and you have only rules and process to go by because you're flying blind, basically, uh, then that two doesn't give you that big of a clue, and that three doesn't give you that big of a clue. But again, it right here that tells me it's prime. I get there's only one way to do it. There's either this way or long, and this is prime. There's only one way to do it this this way or that way. So, right. So anyway, she was able to see that the going across here because the way we built it is x squared plus x plus one. That's this. That's this side. And then distance up is 3x plus 2. Now, I couldn't factor that by grouping. I don't have any other uh, tricks up my sleeve that I know of that uh, in rules and process other than try it out. But here we can see how it works. Pretty simple. Can I factor this down uh, further? No, I cannot because x squared plus x, I'd need 2x plus 1 to factor it to be able to factor this. So that is as far down as we can factor it using kid speak. Okay, so then we played a game. I'm going to give you, I made a drawing. And I'm going to tell you the symbols, right? I spoke the symbols to her. She had to write them down. And then you have to do a drawing that's the same as mine. And then tell me the sides. That was the game, right? So we each had our little piece of paper and we were drawing on it. And the other person couldn't see what we were drawing. And then the trick or the uh, object of the game was to get the same picture as the other person drew. But you only had symbols to work with. So I gave her 2x to the third plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. And this was her first attempt at it. There's the 2x to the third, see it? There's my 3x squared. Oops, didn't get the x, and certainly couldn't fit 3 in there, could I? So that one doesn't work. Next attempt, uh, 2x, hmm, how about if I put, right? And then see, this was the huge clue for her right there. She goes, oh, this 2x must have been here, right? That's the only place I could put them when you get down to it. So if I'm going to put those there, oh, then suddenly it made sense to put the 3x there and the 3 units there. Boom. Factored. Right? Again, could not factor this by grouping. Didn't have any tricks. So x squared plus 1, 2x plus 3 are the factors. And can you see the 2x plus 3? Boom. There's that times that using distributive. Okay, so this part's pretty easy, even, right, even if you don't have the blocks to work with. And then how do I make this? Well, and I'd have to multiply that out. So a lot of times you can factor it by figuring what this part's going to be, and you'll see that in a second. But anyway, if you have the picture, boy, doesn't that make it a lot easier? And then she gave me one. So there's 4x to the third, 3x, and we're playing a game. We're just playing. It's like playing, I can't remember, there's these games where you have to figure out the color codes and so forth. Right? And just have fun. Right? The idea is to enjoy yourself. So there is 4x to the third plus 3x squared plus 8x plus six. Hmm. Now I look at that and I think, hmm, it's either going to be uh, a two by two or it's going to be all four on top. And I like all four on top or on top of each other. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Because of this. Right? And and also because of this. So I that was my first try. I'm going to draw it like this. Instead of having them side by side where I have this here and this here. And so I, you know, so the, the one factor is two x squared. I'm just going to have one x squared. And the reason why I did that is because the 8x will fit nicely here, right? You see how I'm going to put right where it's going to go there? And then it also makes sense to put the 3x there, because or 3x squared there, because 3 times 2 is 6. See how the numbers just, it's just a puzzle, and it's just fooling around and having fun. So I put those there, and then I put these guys there, and then I put those guys there, and there I am, factored out. Well, do you see why I put them like this, and then I put these eight here, and then I have my two by three to make my six, right? If you don't have a picture like this, would you have any possibility of doing that in your head? 
right? Now, I've seen where they say, well, okay, could you find a common factor here? It is 2. So you put the 2 there, and that's 4x plus 3. And then hopefully when you multiply this out, it works out. And lo and behold, it does, right? So a lot of times, this, this gives you the, uh, the, uh, where the rules and process comes from. Because really, the guys that were doing these, this is a little secret that, that uh, they don't tell you, but the uh, guys that were originally doing these were drawing pictures in the sand that look a lot like this. Really, they were. Um, anyhow, so there it is. Done. Simple. And we went back and forth several times just playing, and we, neither one of us stumped the other. Then we did uh, a couple of problems like this where I have 3x plus 2 is the same thing as 11. <laughs> Rather sloppily drawn. There's hero 0. Took it away from both sides. Got 3x. And then I asked her, how did you get the 3? And she goes, well, because 3 times 3 is 9. I said, well, how about no fun, get back to 1 so you can remember always, because she's about to be taking a, a test coming up, in a mathematics aptitude test or something like that, where uh, you do division instead. So there's my 1, and there's 9 divided by 3 is 3. And understanding that this is a rectangle and a rectangle. She says, oh, yeah, I remember that. And then we did some fractions. And lo and behold, she had forgotten how to do fractions. Not unlike many other students I've had <laughs> that uh, have no, quote-unquote, problems or learning disabilities and no diagnosis of autism. They just they can't remember how to do fractions. And they're 16-year-old boys that, you know, <laughs> just totally don't like math <laughs> or don't like fractions. They're okay with the algebra as long as it doesn't have any uh, fractions in it. Anyhow, so here we just drew all the little boxes out. And this is, I think, this is more than a few uh, examples in. I finally started taking pictures again. Uh, so we did several problems. And she was able to put five there and three there. Well, what, what are you doing? So she thought about it and got it. And there you go. So now we've got all the boxes filled in. So if we and look at the fractions page. And look at other videos that are on fractions that we've done where we talk about if I have to move over by 5 here, then I obviously have to move over by 5 on top too, right? So basically I'm multiplying by 1 here, which is 5 times 5 over 5, instead of that rule about multiply this times that and that times this, right? Doing the cross and blah, 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 blah right? We understand that we're multiplied by 1. If we multiply by 1, we don't change anything. This is going to come in handy when we're doing other algebra. And we multiply by 1 over here, again. And the 1 that we multiplied by was 4 over 4. And there you go. So now I just add 5 of the 20th kind and 12 of the 20th kind. And I get 17 of the 20th kind. Very simple. So anyway, that was our lesson. Uh, a brief synopsis. 15 minutes of an hour, a little over an hour lesson. Mostly we played algebra. Um, before we did this, we played around with add-ins. And uh, just, you know, adding numbers in our head. What's 7 plus 5? What's 6 plus 4? Four? 4 needs to be what? Or 4 needs what to be a 10, etc. 27 plus 9 is how much, 27 plus 6 is how much, 17 and 15 is how much. Then we did multiplication, uh, just, you know, multiplication facts out to 20. Start off with the simple ones from, you know, 1 to 12, and then worked our way up to, you know, 13 times 15, 16 times 17, etc., just to practice. And these were all done in her head, by the way, no symbols. And when we got to the ones that were like 16 times 17, she was able to, she was allowed to draw them. But like 13 times 13 doesn't even need to draw it anymore. 13 times 14 doesn't need to draw it anymore because she can see it in her head. Uh, 16 times 17, ooh, need to you know, we'll draw a little picture of it. Anyhow, croutonramoneshouseofmath.com for more.